day two of 100 days of code and big whoop, you can put something on the screen. But let's see if we can take something from our users instead. Now this is the input command. It's very, very similar to print, but what it does do is it shows the text on the screen, but won't do anything else until our user has typed something in and pressed enter. So it looks very much like the input command. Let's test it out. Now you'll see the program's run, but it's waiting for me to type something in. So I'm going to go over into my console, put my name in. Ah, well, it took it and the program finished because we've seen our replit icon, but it's not quite doing anything exciting with it. Let's change that. One of the issues we've got is that we've taken something from the user, but we haven't put it anywhere. We've essentially gone, what's your name? And immediately forgot it, like all those people we've met at parties. Let's change that. And to change that, we need to discuss the concept of a variable. Now, a variable is a named piece of computer memory, and you can think about it like a box. Now, our variable, we can give a name to. And with our variable having a name, we have a place to put some. When my user types in the information, then we can place it in that box so that it's stored within there. If I ever want to access that information, then I just need to tell the computer that I want what's in the box, please. And ta-da, it appears. One thing worth remembering is that variable names can't have spaces in there. So you'll need a strategy for variable names that are descriptive. Most people either use underscores to represent spaces or they use camel case where the first letter of each word is capitalized to show where they start and stop. So a variable needs to be created and then we need to use a single equal sign to assign that variable. In our case, we're assigning them to the input, basically whatever the user types. Let's see how this works. So it's asking me for my name. That gets stored in the variable my name. It's now asking me for my age. That's now stored in the variable my age. Finally, do I like replit? Of course. And that gets stored in the variable replit. Now, the only thing is, I haven't done anything with that. I've stored it in the box and filed the box away, never to be seen again. So, how can I do something with the contents of those variables? Well, it comes down to our print statement again, because we know that print will show on screen whatever is in the brackets. So far, we've put quotes in and just written text. If instead we give the name of a variable and note no quotes here, because variable names don't need them, then what it's going to do, it's gonna look inside that variable and print out the contents onto the screen. This means that extending our code now to print this contents out means I can give it my name, my age, and whether I like replit or not, and it can print that out for me in a sentence. Now, hey, don't worry that it looks a little funky at the moment. We're printing it a line at the time. We'll deal with making it look a bit prettier tomorrow. So what can go wrong with this one? Well, our first problem, as you can see again with the red underline, is invalid syntax. If you run it, you'd see this error. And what's the problem? Well, the problem is just that my variable has a space in it. And we know that variables shouldn't have spaces in them. And if you take that away, we end up with a working program. What else can go wrong? Take a look at this. Ugh. Now that is a horrible crash. That's one of those nasty ones that doesn't really make a great deal of sense at first viewing. But you see, it always tries to give us a line number. It always tries to tell us where the problem is. And in this case, it's saying my grandma is not defined. What, is that some sort of diss? Well, it's not, because what it means is that when we went to print it out, it couldn't find that box couldn't find a box or a variable with my grandma as the name and if you look carefully the reason for that is again capitalization we set my grandma up in camel case and we're actually wanting it in camel case as well if we change that it'll print it out nicely You've got to be careful about how pedantic programming can be about capitalization and you have to get used to making sure that if you set up a variable in a name in one way that when you call that variable reuse it it looks exactly the same. Now we've also got this, which is the worst kind of error. We call this a logic error because 
Nothing breaks, nothing's underlined in red to say that it's not gonna work, but there is a fundamental logical problem with this program. Let's try it. What am I having for lunch? Burrito. Well, that's a strange way of saying it. It sounds like you really should just order my lunch as soon as possible. I said I wanted a burrito, not just my lunch. Well, I've made a common mistake here, and that's because I've accidentally put the name of my variable in quotes. Remember, quotes literally print out whatever happens to be in them. In this case, it's the name of the variable, so the name of the variable gets printed. To print the content of the variable, you need to make sure that it has no quotes around it. And when we do it this time, boom, we get the answer we were looking for. For those of you that fancy an extra challenge, I have once again broken a bunch of code. Please fix it for me, please. Okay, here's your challenge for today. We're gonna to write a program that gets to know your users. You're gonna ask them for their name, their favorite food, their favorite music, and where they live, and you're gonna store all of that in separate variables that you give names to. You're gonna print out a blank line or two. Spoilers, you do that by just doing print and brackets. It'll just print out a line or so. And then at the end, we want a full sentence, like you see on the screen at the moment, that explains all about that user to themselves. Now let's stop by giving them a positive affirmation. Something cool, something exciting to get them engaged. We're gonna do something a little bit different this time. Copy the URL at the top of your window and share it on social media with the hashtag replit 100 days of code and ask your users to try out your program so they can get to know them better. They can immediately click run from that link and try out the code that you've created. It is really, really fun. Let us know what you've built. We'd love to see it. We're doing well. Now tomorrow, we're gonna look at making these sentences a little bit nicer so everything looks nice and pretty.